onto the tape, but by 1956 they'd perfected a broadcast quality machine. This is their earliest surviving recording. This is one of their first colour recordings. Unfortunately, the sound has been lost. The quality of the pictures on these Ampex machines became very good. This machine in the BBC Video Library was built in the late 60s. Ampex had updated the styling, but it still worked in basically the same way. However, the heads gradually wear the oxide off the tapes. They can only be played about 30 times, and the loose oxide has to be regularly swept up. This is the next generation of Ampex machine. The tape is half the width, and the machine doesn't wear the oxide off. These machines provided a basis for the first domestic video recorders, and have also remained a broadcast standard ever since. Machines like this could be made much, much smaller. But by 1970, the audio cassette had become established, and it was obvious that a cassette video system would be more suitable for a domestic machine, particularly because it would protect the fragile heads. Philips introduced the first machine like this, the N1500, in 1972. This one's actually a bit later, but it uses the same square cassettes with one reel of tape on top of the other. This was followed by the, another Philips system, the V2000, the Sony Betamax, the Sony Video 8, and of course VHS. The cassette system does add greatly to the mechanical complexity of the machine. Bringing the cassette in and wrapping it round the drum needs two completely separate mechanisms. It's all wonderfully ingenious, but it does look a bit out of place in this age of solid-state technology. The electronics are just as ingenious, though it's not quite so obvious. A domestic machine only records half as much information about each picture as a broadcast quality one, but the difference is hardly noticeable. It's only when you record from one tape to another a few times that the electronics have problems and the imperfections start to show up. This is an original recording. The quality is really very good. But unlike broadcast machines, the quality of the second and subsequent generations quickly deteriorates. First, the picture gets less sharp. Then the colour stops fitting the picture and the vertical lines get more ragged. Then the sound quality deteriorates and the colour, which is recorded separately, disappears. Finally, the picture and the sound break up completely. Video recorders have now been around for over 10 years, and in that time their design has changed quite considerably. Some things have definitely improved. The early machines used to have lots of belt drives, basically rubber bands, and these things used to stretch and perish. Rex and I had this problem with these beavers. We made 12 for a publisher to go in and shop windows, and they had belt-driven motors in the base. None of them work for more than a week, and I've been very weary of belt drives ever since. Today, the rubber bands in video recorders have been replaced by gears and other mechanisms that are much more reliable. The old machines were twice the size and weight of the new ones. Without modern microprocessor chips, the old machines had three times as many components. This miniaturization does have some drawbacks, though, when it comes to repairs. These little black dots on here are actually this component in miniature, and it's bad enough replacing one of these tiny things without trying to replace one of these little tiny uh, modern resistors. And you need a remarkable eyesight to be able to do it. Other, of course, problems we do have as children see mummy and daddy pushing videos in here, so they have a nasty habit of pushing things in there as well. They can be anything from 
uh, sticky jam sandwiches and toast to toys and all sorts of things. And of course, that doesn't do the tape transport mechanism any good either. OK, let's uh, just put it on, you uh, The other problem with video recorders is that they're not getting any easier to use. What am I doing wrong, Amelia? Is, is there a green light? No. Uh, uh, is it 2,200 hours or eight? Well, how can I see? I, I, I don't see. know. I think it's page 43. Oh. Maybe uh, we need the thingy. Oh, uh, the thingy? Oh, oh, you mean the remote thingy? No. Oh, I don't know where it is. Just numbers, you know, it means nothing. Oh, it's all, it's all wired in at the back. Not there. Not there. Ow! Oh, here it is. Great. Oh, but it's not going. Hi, Cressida. Let me do it, Dad. It's really easy. Oh, great. Well, video recorders may not be perfect, but I still think it's a miracle they work at all. The illusion of reality they create is so convincing it's very hard to believe that what you've been watching for the last half hour is really just a load of rust. Thank you.